Aiden? Emma said when the group passed by their table. Chris looked her way while pushing Aiden's wheelchair, but his expression was unreadable. Did he look disappointed? Aiden did not spare her a glance but kept his eyes pointed straight ahead, a dark thundercloud passing over his features. Did he see her? Was he ignoring her on purpose? Suddenly, Emma sensed with clarity that Aiden must be extremely angry with her. After all, it did look like she was on a date with another man. Emma suddenly staggered up and shouted, Aiden! As she did so, her hand knocked into her full glass of wine and the bright red liquid splattered across the skirt of her dress. The commotion was big enough to attract the attention of everyone else in the room. Whispers erupted as they all glanced at the woman in white and red. Mo Yan jumped up in alarm and passed his cloth napkin to Emma, who began to dab absent-mindedly at her dress. She watched Chris's back as he pushed Aiden toward the elevator at the back of the restaurant. Is something wrong? I'm sorry, Dr. Yan, I just... that... I saw someone I knew. Her eyes were still trained on Aiden across the room, who was saying something to one of the businessmen in a flashy suit. She recognized him as Uncle Dale. Emma sat down dejectedly and stared at her pink-stained fingers in her lap. Dr. Yan was saying something, but she didn't hear what it was. When she eventually looked up, her eyes widened in surprise. The crowd of business people had gone upstairs, but Aiden and Chris were coming back towards them. Emma, Aiden said coldly, what happened to your dress? His gaze fell over her stained dress, and the corner of his lips curled up into a sneer. She could see his clenched fists, and could guess how he was feeling. Um, Aiden, this is Dr. Yan, I told you about him, Emma introduced the professor to her husband. I'm Aiden Grant. He held out his hand in the most unfriendly manner possible. Dr. Yan's smile was bright. Straightening his back, he reached out to shake Aiden's hand. It's a pleasure to meet you. The two of them stared at each other for a long time, assessing each other. The seconds passed, but neither man let go, only strengthened their grip. Emma broke their competition up by saying, Aiden, what are you doing here? Is it a business lunch? Aiden didn't immediately answer as he was still too busy glaring at the other man. Just then, the vice president of the Grant Company walked up to their table, smiling at Emma. When she looked up at Dale standing there with his charming smile, Emma could feel her insides shriveling up inside of her. Aiden is treating all of us today to celebrate his promotion, Dale said. Why don't you come and eat with us, Emma? I... of course... She slowly stood up and walked to Aiden's side, standing awkwardly. Dr. Yan, I have to apologize for leaving halfway through our meal, but I should probably go with... It's fine. Mo Yan smiled stiffly. Chris, why don't you order something else for Dr. Yan to make up for the ordeal? Aiden glanced at his assistant. Of course. There's no need. The corners of Dr. Yan's lips twitched downwards. Dr. Yan, I really am sorry. Emma apologized again. What else could she say? With a smile, he waved his hand. I've already finished my meal anyway. I'll take my leave after I foot the bill. What? No, it's, it's... I said it's my treat. Emma was already searching through her purse for cash when Aiden stopped her. Chris, please pay Dr. Yan's bill. An elegant smile appeared on his lips. Although his voice was gentle... There was a violent undertone behind it. Yes, sir. Chris hurried away to find a waiter. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations on the promotion. With one last wave, Mo Yan quickly walked away. I... Before Emma could say anything, he was already gone. She blinked in confusion. Why did he leave so quickly? Aiden turned his head to glance at her, seeing her furrowed eyebrows and pursed lips. His face turned cold. Without another word, he turned his wheelchair around and headed towards the elevator with Dale. Aiden, she called out, running after him. Not wanting to cause more of a scene, she took over pushing the wheelchair for him and followed Dale to the banquet hall. Everyone stopped talking as they turned to look at the unfamiliar woman who had appeared in their midst. Her hair was in disorder and her dress had a huge stain on it from a spilled drink. Was she his wife? 
But when did young Abe and Grant get married? Why didn't they receive the news? How were they not informed? She sat next to Aiden and made polite small talk with the company executive sitting near her. Even then, he still didn't speak to her. The people around them shared secret looks and cast glances at the couple. Towards the end of their meal, seeing that Emma had only ordered a bowl of soup for herself and barely touched it, Aiden looked at her with a question in his eye. Emma smiled. I'm not very hungry, but I still wanted to eat with you, she said sweetly. His hardened expression relaxed, and the corners of his lips raised. Dale had been secretly watching the way Aiden and Emma interacted. He frowned for a few seconds, before relaxing. No one could really tell what he was thinking. Just then, he received a phone call. This is Dale speaking. After listening to the voice on the other end of the line, he pursed his lips and stood up. About this information, please give me some time to think it over. Aiden raised his head and watched his uncle's retreating back. The corners of his lips inched up into a cold, threatening smile for less than a moment. Before long, Dale returned. I have something I have to do in the office, he explained to the group before glancing at his nephew. I'll leave them to you, all right? All right. After patting him on the shoulder, the older man left. Aiden motioned for Chris to come over and whispered something into his ear. His assistant nodded and left the room quickly, leaving the other executives confused by the exchange. It is only when he had signaled to his wife that it was time to leave that they finally understood. We've already paid for the meal, he announced indifferently. Please enjoy yourselves. Thank you. With one last stiff nod, he motioned for Emma to push him out of the room. Everyone smiled politely and nodded. They understood, of course. They were newlyweds, weren't they? Why would they want to stay any longer than they had to at a stuffy business function? Under his directions, Emma pushed Aiden back to the elevator, and they exited a few floors up, using a keycard that Chris had given Aiden. They were now in the hallway of a hotel in the same building. As soon as they entered the room Chris had reserved for them, Aiden turned to her. Go get in the shower. I... Now? Emma looked around the hotel room in confusion. Did he want to sleep with her? Her cheeks reddened in embarrassment. Here? Can't we just go back home and, and do it there, or how about we just do it tonight, okay? Huh? It took him a few seconds to realize what she meant by that. Aiden raised his eyebrows, amused by her insinuation. His rough hand grazed against her wrist, and she resisted the urge to shiver. But I can't wait any longer, he murmured with a wink gripping her tightly. What's wrong with now? Aiden! Emma pushed his hands away from where they were straying at the hem of her dress. I... I have to go to class soon. Then we'd better hurry. The corners of his lips inched up higher and higher as his hands moved restlessly over her waist. She groaned, faintly flushing. But... Every time he touched her, it was like a fire would ignite inside of her. They hadn't even done anything yet, but her breath was already growing rapid. Emma, he said slowly before raising his eyebrows at her. Chris is out buying new clothes for you, and your hands are stained red. Oh, so that's why he got them a room, so she could clean up. Oh, Aiden's low laughter echoed across the bedroom. What, did you want to do something else instead? Emma hid her blushing face in her hands and ran to the bathroom. What's wrong with you? She murmured to herself, wanting nothing more than for the earth to swallow her up. Was this where her mind goes after being apart from him all day? When Emma came out of the bathroom, she found Aiden staring out the large window. His laptop was open on his lap. There on the bed was a white dress with matching shoes and a jacket. You bought a whole outfit? She exclaimed. Just the sight was enough to warm her heart. What's wrong? Realizing that she hadn't moved from her spot, he set his computer aside and moved towards her. Nothing. Emma sniffled as she wiped the tears running down her cheeks. It's just so sweet of you to... Emma, why are you crying? He shook his head, amused by her reaction. I'm not crying. 
He nodded doubtingly. Right. Of course you're not. Her bottom lip trembled as she sat down on the bed, struggling to keep herself calm. <sighs> Thank you. She stuttered out as she buried herself against his chest. Thank you. Really. Maybe you can thank me when we get home tonight. He wrapped his arms around her waist and pulled her closer. His lips slammed against hers as they shared a deep and passionate kiss. She groaned. If only she didn't have to go to class. Daniel was walking towards the neurology building when he spotted a familiar Audi parked on the roadside. He looked closer. Emma stepped out of the back door of the car. She was just about to walk away when a man's arm reached out and pulled her back into the car. Although he couldn't hear what they were saying, it was obvious from the way Emma was leaning towards the man in the car that they were close. Goodbye, she called out as she left him. Daniel couldn't really see who was in the car, and before he could look, the Audi had already pulled away. When Emma spotted Daniel standing near the door to the building, she slowly made her way towards him, trying to brace herself for all the possible insults he'd shoot at her. What she didn't expect was for him to ask her, I heard you were sick. There was mockery dancing in his eyes. Emma gazed at him indifferently. The last thing she wanted to deal with was his meddling. She simply shrugged at him. Daniel clenched his fists. Does this woman not know who she was dealing with? Was she really going to ignore him like that? How can you be so shameless? Shameless? Emma resisted the urge to snort as she rolled her eyes at him. I don't believe it's any of your business. Emma found a seat and tried to act as if nothing had just happened, even though her other classmates were glancing between Daniel and her, wondering what was going on. Not long after she was seated, a petite woman walked towards her table. Hi, do you mind if I sit here? Go ahead. My name's Stephanie Burns, she introduced herself. It's nice to meet you. I'm Emma Turner, she responded. The class had just finished when Stephanie suddenly asked, Emma, are you and Daniel fighting? Huh? Emma slowly shook her head. No. Then, just as she was about to ask something else, Emma stood up and grabbed her bag. Sorry, I have to go. Emma hurriedly left the classroom. She had just come outside when a shadow blocked her path.